Kentucky. All right, guys, let me have your attention. Um, as March Madness and the Final Four ended, you know, I'm, I'm watching the basketball games, and uh, I don't think I'm different than a lot of people. But when you think about uh, television, and when you think about uh, excitement, man, I, I love the three weeks in March. Why do people love it so much? Why do I love it so much? Because it's pure. They are playing their hearts out. They're playing with so much energy. It's the greatest thing in the world. You got to find that energy. You got to find how you can play your very best when it means the most. So we've said so many times how talented we are. Hey, we've played really good at times, but how can we do it when it means the most? How can we do it more often? How can we do it consistently? If we're going to be the team that we want to be, we have to play with that kind of energy, right? That kind of body language. That man, you can just feel it when you're watching a television. That man, they are putting it on the line. That is the best. That is the very most that guy can give right now for his team. Tonight, let's learn how to play that kind of baseball. Come on, boy. What? Thus far in the year, the Rebels had become accustomed to sophomore hurler James MacArthur providing quality starts and going deep into contests. But the early goings of this game were anything but usual. All four, a full count walk to Chandler Avan to start this ball game. Two homers, nine RBIs, right-handed batter in the dirt, bounces away from Fortez. And MacArthur showing some control issues here for the first two guys. James is our ace. You know, he's our Friday night guy. And, uh, and those big guys, sometimes it's hard for them to find their motion. But James is usually right away, right from the start of the game, he just pounds the zone. He's just, he just fills the zone up with fastballs. It wasn't really uh, what we're used to seeing or I'm sure what he was used to going through. In the dirt again, it's 2-0. and Avian trying to get to third. The throw from Fortez is not in time. Just being out there, I think at the beginning I was – had a little adrenaline, tried to overthrow, and then once I started overthrowing and missing, I started trying to underthrow and uh, just those strikes, and then kind of made it a little bit worse. 3-1. The low ball four. He's walked the first two he's faced, so first and third with uh, no outs. 27 previous innings, James MacArthur had two wild pitches. He's got two without an out here in the first. Mike Bianco in his 17th season as the head coach at Ole Miss. Made a lot of trips out to the mound through the year. 647 wins. You got to get your rhythm here. You got to find your rhythm. You know what I'm saying? And then just let it go, right? Okay. Just let it go. You know, you, you make the first pitch fastball, right? And then we go breaking ball. It was close, but it's a ball. But yeah. then after that, you know, you're missing some arm side balls. Extend, reach into there, and let's get the ground ball back to you. Unless the guy's dead out at home, go to second base, get two outs, and let's, you know, finish this. Just got to get back in the strike zone, right? Yeah. First pitch, fastball away. Come on. Coach P, he's a, he's a smart coach. He's one of the best in the league. Uh, so he knows what he's talking about. He knows when to say things and when not to say things. And uh, if he approaches you with something and he says it to you then, then it was probably the right decision, the right time to say it. Well, you know, sometimes I think you just got to challenge him. You know, I, uh, you, know you just asked me a question. Sometimes you got to pat him on the rear, and sometimes you, you got to kick him in the rear. Hey. Look, you, you, sit down. You know, you've heard all this before, right? If you want to be an ace, you gotta, you gotta laugh. But this is the thing. If you want to last, you gotta throw. You know what I'm saying? You're not throwing the ball. You're throwing it like you're scared, right? And they can't hit you, right? So if you threw the ball even close to the way you're capable, you'll just mow them down. I get it. Sometimes it's a rhythm thing. Figure out the rhythm. I'm on your side. I want you. I'm pitching you on Friday night. Nobody believes in you more than I do. So if you want to win, then go win the game. It's yours. Go, man, cruise. We'll, we'll score more than one, right? And you just cruise, but man, you got to go after him, right? Come on. I mean, he's gotten into me before between innings whenever I uh, haven't gotten things going just to kind of wake me up. And what he pretty much told me was, you know, you're our ace, you're our guy, you need to go out there and you need to attack these guys like you can. He needed to be pushed a little bit and challenged a little bit. And, uh, you know, thankfully for us, you know, he found his motion.
pitch, ground ball hits sharply to Bortles at the edge of the grass, one away. Man, he's got good hands. I mean, that ball got on him in a quickness. He was played in, taking away the bunt, and just scooped it up through the first. Hi, Jay. Hi, man. Hey, man. Strike three called. That's the third strikeout. And delivers to Alexander. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number four for James McArthur. One pitch away, K-126. I'm bay. The 2-2 two -two to Kaufman. Strike three call. Fastball got him looking out or half. That is the James McArthur that we have seen all year, able to hit that outside corner. Ball to Blackman at second, kind of handcuffed and throws over. That's six in a row retired by James McArthur. Win a pitch, James, win a pitch. McArthur, ready? Swing and a miss, overpowered him with the fastball there, struck him out. It's like he, he has almost reinvented himself on the mound, on the fly tonight. After the first inning, Colby came over to me. He was like, hey, we're going to get that run back. Don't worry about that. And, you know, I got tons of confidence in those guys. And we, we get hits all season. It's just a matter of if we can string them together. And, and when we do, we're really dangerous. And he's a line drive to left field there. 77 on that one, Keith. And a leadoff single for the Rebels in the fourth, second hit of the game. We talk a lot about putting that chain together and or not breaking the chain to have a quality at bat after a quality at bat. And uh, and it certainly is helpful and more productive when some of those at bats and some of those links to the chain are extra base hits. And his pitch swung on, lined it into that left center gap. Yeah. That's going to be real trouble. Golson round second. He'll hit third. They're going to try to score him. You got to go, Ag. You got to go. You got to go. Well, he hit it right into the empty defense, and it paid off, and we're tied 1 1. Yeah! The Rams are running. He's got a two hit game, trying to turn it into a double. Bortles comes around to score. Back-to-back -back doubles by Ole Miss, and it's two to one. And there it is. That's exactly what we were talking about. Ole Miss stringing hits together. Not only did they get a runner on base, but they got him on second base, and this is where big innings start. Ooh, he does drive it the opposite way, deep into the right center gap. Good time yeah. for a green light. Third double of the inning for Ole Miss. It's three to one. And a pitch down low, and Dillard's going to try to score. Yeah. yeah. Good read again by Dillard. The usual suspects had produced for the Rebels, giving them a four-run advantage. But no lead is safe in the SEC, and Coach Mike Bianco would have two relatively fresh faces deliver the insurance runs. Hey, go to work, Sam. He go. He go. And a fly ball to left field. That ball is crushed, and it is gone. Solo shot. Nick. Tez puts the Rebels up 5-1. to one. It was a 2-0 count, and I knew I was going to get a fastball. He threw me one, and it just happened to be up in the zone. I'm not a big home run pimper, uh, as some people call it. So I just hit hit the ball. I knew it was gone and started jogging a little early, I guess. But uh, it felt really good to see the ball go over the fence. It's Swayze. That's big, man. Awesome, man. Nice shot. Nice shot. Tim Rowe to bat for Fitzsimmons is a left-handed hitter, so he'll switch over the left-handed batter. All fastball. over the place, right? Fastball, hey, gutter, all over you're going to get a fastball, yeah. right? You're, you're going to get a fastball at some point, right? So be ready for it. Don't be late, right? 90-92? Yep. Hey, short, get to it. I'm on the mic, and I'm calling a bomb. I'm calling a bomb, and I'm on the mic. And the 2-1. Tim Rowe with his second jack of the year. There's going to be times where you're going to need for guys that maybe weren't the marquee guys going into the season or uh, the guys that maybe weren't even starting at the beginning of the season that have to impact the season. It's really cool to see, like especially both those guys are really hardworking guys. And when they finally did get their moment, they definitely uh, took advantage of it. Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing is just trying to be the best teammate that I could be. I just, you know, wait my turn, be a good teammate, and whenever I do get uh, that shot, try to make the most of it. Ole Miss looking for its 18th win of the season, and its fourth victory in SEC play. Fly ball to left. Kyle Watson has come into the game. He squeezes it for the final out. 
And Ole Miss wins game one of this weekend's three-game series by a final of 7-2 to over Alabama. What? What a finish up. Boys over. A lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. Love games here in Swayze. Nothing better than Friday night fireworks. Fireworks, man. Firework Friday is so much better than the Dungeon. All right, bring it in here. Hey, uh, you know, congratulations, and obviously it's always good to win and good to win on Friday. Good nights today by, obviously, Roe, uh, you know, with the big coming off the bench and hitting a home run. Bortles, as I mentioned, Golson with two hits, Olenek, I think, with two hits. Uh, but a guy with four quads, moves him over twice, big home run, and an HBP. Where's Mr. Forte? Yeah. Congrats, man. Good job. Uh, hard hat. Um, give it out to, uh, I guess, the most valuable player of the game, but um, kind of symbolizes, um, you know, our goal, which is 21 SEC wins, but also honors George. That was George's number. Um, so I feel pretty honored to get it today, helping us uh, get a little closer to that goal. Who's George? Uh, George was the main character in our, uh, in our book that we read, The Hard Hat by John Gordon. He was a lacrosse player that uh, unfortunately died. Um, but he was a great teammate, and that's what he lives on to be is in everyone's hearts is a good teammate. So, Yeah, it was a good night. We had fun. We were dancing, keeping the energy up, and I think we attributed a lot of those seven runs, all the dugout energy. It was us. It was us. You know, great to finally get a win, get seven runs on the board, uh, and to get a good night's sleep and do it again tomorrow.